Good morning, everyone. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Very good. Very good. All right. This is the day the Lord has made, and we should rejoice in it and be glad in it. <laughs> All right. Who wants to kick us in prayer? Anyone? Any bold volunteers today? Go for it, Lily. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, Thank you, Lord, uh, for this beautiful day. And we are giving more thanks for uh, this, this year. Yes. This is Thanksgiving week. Yes. And for this life. And for the, so far, all the good, the holy, and beautiful that we have yes. created. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. more to come. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> that is awesome. And we have so much to be thankful for, really and truly and deeply. Not just on that one day, but every day that we wake up to have a day to deliber deliberately create with Source Creator, good, holy, and beautiful. And not only for ourselves, but for the benefit of the world, too, that for those that come before us, so we can share all this good stuff with them. <laughs> Praise report testimonies, by the way. We had an awesome Thanksgiving. Yes. Go for it, Anton. So about um, a few days back, either Wednesday or Tuesday, um, I thought to myself, really? So now I'm, uh, I'm struggling in Etsy because they, they, they are not that nice to to new members they're they they are joining to sell stuff. And in my mind, I was like, okay, I really need to get rid of my inventory. Not not get rid, not per se, but of more of like how can I sell them just to make back what I what I put in already mm -hmm. so that I can at least have some money back and buy some more stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and so in my mind I was like, who can I contact with? And 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 so I went about to do my duties during work. And during lunchtime, one of my friends, uh, part of the guild member, he he texted me and he was like, hey, Anson, have you talked to the to the lady at the art gallery? And I was like, I completely forgot about that. <laughs> so so I guess an angel came to me and reminded me to like, hey, you should probably email her, <laughs> which I did. And I didn't get any reply for a while. And I told myself that it was on Friday. I told myself, you know what? I'm just going to let it go. <clears throat> I'm going to focus on, on my hobbies. I'm going to meet up with one of my friends and learn more on how I can make new stuff out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and Saturday came by and that's when in the morning, early in the morning, I can't believe she, she emailed back at 3 a.m., which woke me up. Um, and, and then, then that's when she asked me, Hey, I've been waiting for one of you guys to contact me. Let's talk. Right. <laughs> mm. It was as simple as sending an email. I should have done that earlier, but I didn't. <laughs> mm. Oh, man. Praise God. What a blessing. What a blessing. What a blessing. And how fast did that take from the time you had that thought to the time it happened? Well, the first one happened within hours and wow. the second one was pretty much after I sent that email less than five days pretty fast <laughs> speed of thought mm -hmm. great, job. great job any others thank you for sharing that no all good all right we are on page 383 and as I told you last week we will be talking about the God of sickness. And it's not gloomy, but it's to educate and inform and share. Especially with this uh, new variant that is uh, surfacing. It is important that we discuss it from a spiritual standpoint. I'm not a scientist, so I don't do science. I trust science. <laughs> what goes up, what goes down. Love chemistry. So, question number one. Can you change your... Hello, Adrian. How are you? I'm good, Pastor. How are you? I am blessed and highly favored. Thank you. How was your Thanksgiving? It was uh, excellent. Very relaxing. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You got a praise report testimony? 
Uh, I woke up feeling yeah. good. <laughs> there you go. We can start right there. <laughs> Ain't get no better than that. Oh, yeah. All right. Question number one on page 383. And the title is The God of Sickness. Can you change your reality? Oh, come on. That's an easy one. Can you change your reality? Definitely. Definitely. Hmm. You are the creator of your what? Reality. Oh, reality. Uh -huh. If you think about it <clears throat> on a specific scale of what your Holy Bible says when we quoted it this morning, <clears throat> pardon us. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. So now, who made the day? The Lord did, right? Mm -hmm. where, where does the Lord reside? Inside us. Ooh. Crazy who is in. Uh-oh, y'all see where we're going? Mm -hmm. So as you wake up and create your reality, you wake up like this. Oh, this is going to be an awesome day. It's a beautiful day outside. It's blue sky. It's sunny. It's 75 degrees. It's not too hot. It's not too cold. It's very quiet. It's very peaceful. Or you can go, I hate this day. I'm in so much pain. I got all these bills. My neighbor stayed up all night playing rock music or rap music. And they were arguing. And we had gunshots. And we had to sleep on the floor. And it was really, really cold. And I'm hungry. Or now, see how we re Now, what type of reality are we creating from that perspective of when we come into the day? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. And oftentimes, people go to sleep with their sickness and wake up with it. They'll wake up with their issues or problems or they'll go to sleep with them and wake up with them. That's why most times you often hear people say they have what? Sleepless rest. Mm -hmm. Instead of resting in peace. Mm -hmm. It's because they worried and worried and worried themselves sick to the point where now they're no function. So now they wake up and go, oh, I'm sick of the dog. Oh, I'm so sick. Mm. Oh, I feel horrible. Oh, we just cannot stand this day. Now, this is the reality that they've created. Now, law of attraction says what? They're going to attract everything that they have thought and said. Because this is what they believe. <clears throat> so can you change your reality? You sure can. So now the way you do it is you go from a, if you're having a negative thought, you try your best to find something positive, something happy that you can at least latch on to. Even if you got to go in your past, even if you got to create it in your future, even if you got to retell the story, however you need to do to reinvent the wheel per se, to change the mindset. Does that make sense? In other words, we taught you previously to have a new sponsoring thought because the previous thought or the thought before that thought is what dictated everything that's happening in the reality now. Mm -hmm. And it's normally dictated by the ego and it's from a place of fear. This is why most of the times that the manifestation and the desires that people are wanting cannot come to them. Does that make sense? And one of the things is, it's hard to change people's reality in terms of their perception is based on what they see. If they wake up in a ghetto with very little means, how difficult is it for them to really change their reality? Very difficult. Yes. Because they're living in a place of belief where this is all they know, not everyone. And then most people do it with their money. They do it with their, with everything. Mm. Two, what comforter can there be for the sick children of God except for his power through you? Ooh, is this a trick question? Yes, it is. Yes. <laughs> but the answer is what? Yes. We taught you that the 
Holy Spirit is the comforter and the teacher. That is his function. So what comforter, Holy Spirit, can there be for the sick children except for who? His power through who? You. So when the sick come amongst you, you're inclined to do what? Heal them through the Holy Spirit. Uh This is why you often know what to say when you don't have the means to touch. You can say comforting words. Hey, you know what? You're going to get better. Or Lily would say straight to the point. Oh, you're not sick. You just think you're sick. It's an illusion of your mind. The universe says you're happy, healthy, and whole. Every cell in your body, and they would go, okay, we're happy, healthy, and whole. We buy that. (laughs) But it's a way, and and it's not a forceful, but it's a word of a respect because they respect what she's telling them from the place of love. Mm. Why? Because the law of attraction brought them two together. Just like when those that are before me that want healing through the Holy Spirit, they, I know exactly what to say through the Holy Spirit. I know what to, we Mm. just know. Does that make sense? Yes. It can only be done through God, through the Holy Spirit, through you. That's Mm. the way it works. This is why you intuitively know what to do. Like when y'all grab the heating pad for your friend who had the the tummy, Mm -hmm. you intuitively knew because of the comforter or the God comforter through him, through you knew what to do. Yes. And the person didn't necessarily need the heating pad they just needed your comfort. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Do you get it? Yes. Because they could feel, oh, that gave me chills even just bringing that up. The compassion that you had for them because you didn't want them to suffer. And mm-hmm. anyone who knows God knows he does not want his children to suffer. Mm-hmm. That's not the way he created them. How can you heal your brothers and sisters? Oh, that's too easy. We do that all day. (laughs) But we're going to get into the depths of it because most people need to understand this. Sickness is blank. And we're not going to give you the answer. Anyone want to take a guess? It is in the lesson. But it's way, probably about the fourth page, maybe. We're guessing. Own creation. What is it? Own creation. Sickness is a co-creation? Your, your own creation. Ooh. Mm. We might buy that. Hmm. Will we buy that? We're going to put that one on the shelf for a yes for the moment. Yes. Sickness is a mindset. Ooh. We're going to put that one next to that one, too. We like that one, too. <laughs> Illusion? Ooh. Oh, my. God. There it is. Oh, this is good. <laughs> there it is. Sickness is an illusion. It is. Ooh, that. Okay, we're going to take those off the shelf and ding, 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 ding. That is the answer. He says uh, he's got the top spot there. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And that's the thing. To side note, most people focus on the cross and not the resurrection. The resurrection is where the healing was. The cross is what the suffering was about. My brother would have you focus on the resurrection, not the cross or the crucifixion. Yes. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. The affirmation, if you notice, we left blank. Mm. (laughs) Because we want you all to fill in your own affirmations when those that are before you are sick. And we promise you they're coming if they're not already there. Now, when we say sick, we, we mean physically and mentally. That falls in the category of we're going we're gonna to role play for a moment and call Anson up and be his friend and go, Anson, oh man, I'm so depressed. Form of sickness, is it not? Because when we look on the emotional scale between 1 and 22, depression is 22. So look how far you have to go to get to love, to get to joy, get the impairment, freedom, appreciation, knowledge, 
the how far you have to go up the scale. So the next one would be, we would say from depression, we'd rather you feel guilty, feel some insecurity. We, that is better than depression. Uh -huh. From there, we would want you to be jealous. From there, you can go to hate and rage. From there, you can go to revenge. See how we are slowly climbing up? Mm -hmm. And once you get really good, you don't give it momentum. Yeah. You have not attacked God and you do love him. Yes, you do. Yes. Even the atheists who proclaim there is no God in their spirit know intuitively that they love a being that they don't understand. Would that be fair to say? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can you change a reality? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. But <clears throat> no one can will to destroy himself. Why? Because you are an eternal being. How can you destroy your spirit? You can. One, you didn't create it. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so two, you have to understand what the spirit is. God is a spirit. So now, what is that spirit? Love and light. For those that, for a basic understanding, love and light, that's the spirit. That is God. When you think you're attacking yourself, it is a sure sign that you hate what you think you are. And this is when people come up and say they're depressed. This is when people are saying that they want to die. This is when people are saying they have no will to live. This is when people are very we used the word earlier, insecure, which is better than depression, but it's still a form of sickness mm -hmm. because they're not loving self and they're relying on others to love self for them. And that's not how it works because people switch on you very quickly. One minute they love you, the next minute they can't stand you. Or one minute they can't stand you, the next minute you're best friends for life. Mm -hmm. You've seen it go both ways. Yeah. And this... And only this can be attacked by you to think you're not who God created you to be as a son of God. What you think you are can be very hateful and what this strange image makes you can be done or makes you do can be very destructive. This is why people that are sick attack but it starts with the stage of mistrust mm -hmm. and then it's viciousness and then it's the attack yet the destruction is no more real than the image although those who make idols do worship them the idols are nothing but their worshipers are the sons of god in sickness so everyone who says that they are not who God says they are, are sick. Mm -hmm. And we're not picking on the church. We're not picking on any religious status. But we're saying this is majority of them walk into the building sick, unhealthy, and leave sick and unhealthy. When the master, Jesus, was around, he healed the sick, the lame the deaf, the dumb, and even raise the dead. And then he said, the works that I do, you too shall do in greater works than these because I go unto the Father. So we have to change the mindset of the people that are before us from a sick state to a whole state. Just like the woman <clears throat> that we use this in your Bible who had the issue of blood for 12 years. And her proclamation was, if I can just do what? Touch the hem of his garment, I'll be what? Made whole. Jesus made the same proclamation after they had the who touched me and master, everybody touched you because there's thousands of people. Mm -hmm. But woman, your faith has made you what? Whole. <clears throat> yeah. God would have them released from their sickness and return to his mind. His mind is a whole mind because he created us what? Holy. Mm -hmm. Y'all kiss that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. 
He will not limit your power to help them. But here's the problem. People who don't understand this teaching or understand the mind of God will get into a pity party with the sick person. Oh, I'm so, oh, you so sick. Oh, oh man, really? Oh, I remember when I was sick too, man. Oh man, wow. You really do look bad. Now look how that conversation goes. Now I got two sick conversations with two sick beings, even though the one is trying to comfort. Yes? Yeah. But subconsciously, what are they doing? They're feeding you into it. Yes. Instead of what Jesus would do, Jesus would come out and ask them a simple question. And here it is. Do you want to be healed? And then his next question was, do you believe that you can be healed? He would always, always, always mm -hmm. ask those two questions. Mm -hmm. Do you believe that you want, do you believe? Yes. And if they said no, there was nothing that he or God or Holy Spirit could do because of their free will. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now there was an, we won't say an exception, but there was a man at the pool of Bethesda and Jesus came and asked him a question. Do you want to be healed? And the man said, every time the angel of the Lord come down, y'all remember me telling the story? And stir up the pool, Joe, run up. But the man was merely stating his position and his condition. Yes? Yeah. He didn't give a yes or a no uh, answer. No. Yes. He just gave a reason of why he was in that condition. Yes, Lily. Uh, most people would think that when you're sick, you you physically have to do something. But mm -hmm. it's in reality, it's your mental mindset. Yes. If you have faith, you'll be you'll be whole, you'll be oh. healthy, you'll be perfect. All right, love you all. Good night. You guys have a blessed day. See you tomorrow. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> but that is the truth. The master said, if you have the faith of a mustard seed you can move the mountain so if you had the faith of the mustard seed you could talk to every cell in your body to be happy whole and healthy mm -hmm. you can decree and declare that no sickness disease virus or infection could exist in your body because your body is of the father the son and the holy spirit and not only say those words believe it and own it and walk it and show people this is why you rarely or hardly ever, never, ever, ever, later, 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 never, ever get sick. We're going to throw it out there. The last time we can remember sickness with you all was when Lily and them went overseas and they caught a, be a belief of what they saw. And Pastor, we're sick. And we laughed and go, no, you're not. <laughs> 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 in, in, in reality, it was uh, Melissa, Melissa <laughs> and her kids. And the first question uh, she asked me was, why well, aren't you sick? I'm not sick. I said, I'm not sick. You know, yeah. are you cursing me? <laughs> Misery loves what? Company. Company. <laughs> We're birds of a feather. We what? Fly to, come on, if I'm sick, you're supposed to be... <laughs> And that's how sometimes people think. Why aren't you like me? And then they start looking for signs. Make sense? He will not limit your power to help them because he has given it to you. Oh, thank you. Everyone say, thank you, God. Thank you, God. <laughs> we don't have that power, trust me. Do not be afraid of it because it is your salvation. And I can't not speak for all of them, but I honestly think this is why it's not really taught extensively in the temples or in the churches. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. There are very, 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 very few we can name on our hand temples to this day where the monks understand this and still practice it because it dated back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. It's been proven. Mm -hmm. This is not 
new, it's something that is, and they understand that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Can someone read the next one? One comforter can there be for the sick children of God, except this power to you. Remember that it, it does not matter where in the sonship he, he is accepted. He is always accepted for all. And when your mind believes in him, the remembrance of him awakening throughout, throughout the sonship, he your brothers and sisters simply by accepting God for, for, for that. Slow down. Hold on. <clears throat> now, we've just given you a major key of healing. Heal your brothers and sisters simply. Here it is. By accepting God for them. Now you have to ask the question, how do I accept God for them? I'm glad y'all asked the question. Anyone who wants to take a shot at it? Because you do it all the time with your compassion. When you accept God for them, you see them what? holy you don't see them sick and you don't get into the pity party with them mm -hmm. and you don't let them stay there even though they try and they try and they try and they try and they try to stay in that place and you won't let them and finally you break them and they go okay i give up you win <laughs> not to that degree but almost to that degree because that's the way it goes you introduce healing, they introduce what? Resistance. Yes. Because they're, phys they're physically feeling it in the body. And we truly understand the physical pain. We understand that. But once you get out of the resistance state, because once you ask them a simple question on something they really, really love, can you do this and be in pain? Nine times out of 10, the answer will be what? No. no. Mm -hmm. And they wouldn't think, huh, that is true. When I was doing this, I wasn't in as much pain or I felt no pain. Because the Holy Word says you cannot serve two masters. You either love one or you hate the other. Can't do both at the same time, simultaneously. That makes sense? Okay, keep going. You're my... Your minds are not separated, Ooh. and God has only one channel for healing because He has but one sound. Oh, slow down. Oh, did everybody catch that? We gave you another. Who's the son? You are what? One. Me and my father are one. I'm your elder brother. This is what the master told us. It was always a connection, never a separation. Mm -hmm. When he said, I'm the son of God, you can make the same proclamation. Mm -hmm. Every preacher and pastor is going to fight me on this. But if you really look at what he was saying, this was the truth of it. It was a connection. He did not think it robbery to be equal with God. I'm your elder brother. In other words, we're what? Siblings. We're one. Mm -hmm. I'm just your older brother because I'm the way shore. I'm showing you the way. I'm showing you how to heal the sick, the lame, the deaf, the dumb, the maim, how to increase the faith, how to use the law of attraction, how to understand the laws of the universe. Make sense? <clears throat> okay, keep going. God's remaining communication link with all his children joins them together. Just told you that. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Go ahead. And then, and, then, and then to him to be aware of this is to heal them because it is the awareness that no one is separated and no one is set. Mm -hmm. Tori, can you read the next one? To believe a son of God. Wait, where is it? Page 384. To believe a son of God. To believe a son of God. What? Go ahead. To believe a son of God can be sick is to believe that part of God can suffer. Love cannot suffer because it cannot tag. The remembrance of love therefore brings invulnerability with it. Do not side with sickness in the presence of a son of God, even if they believe in it. Stop. For your acceptance on, of on, God. 
Hold on, you're going too slow down, son. <laughs> this is not a speed race. Slow down. Did everybody catch that? Do not side with sickness in the presence of a son. In other words, when they're sick before you, you don't let them do what? Decree or own sickness. Mm -hmm. Even if they believe it. Mm -hmm. Okay, keep going. Um, For your acceptance. Do not side with sickness in the presence of the Son of God, even if they believe in it. For your acceptance of God and them knowledges the love of God they have forgotten. Okay, thank you. So all they did was forget the, they forgot the love of God. That's it. Your recognition of them, your recognition of them, your recognition of them. Get that, your recognition. And this is what you often do when you're drawn to them. As part of God reminds them of the truth about themselves, which they're denying. Would you strengthen their denial of God and thus lose sight of yourself? Or would you remind them of their wholeness and remember your creator with them? To believe a son of God is sick is to worship the same idol they do. God created love, not adultery. All forms of adultery are caricatures of creation taught by sick minds to divide, to know that creation shares power and never usurpates. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Sickness is adultery. Sickness is what? Adultery. There's your answer. Because it is the belief that power can be taken from you. Mm -hmm. Yet this is impossible because you are part of God who is all power. A sick God must be an idol made in the image of what its maker thinks they are. Does that make sense? Ooh, that should be a bell ringer for some people. Yeah. And that is exactly what the ego does, perceives in a son of God. A sick God, self-created, self-sufficient, very vicious, and very vulnerable. Mm. And every time we see them in their sixth state, they're very what? Vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Is this the idol you would worship? Of course not. Is this the image you would be vigilant to save? Absolutely not. Are you really afraid of losing this? Nope. Look calmly at the logical conclusions of the ego's thought system and judge whether its offering is really what you want, for this is what, if it, what it offers you. To obtain this, you are willing to attack the divinity of your brothers and sisters and thus lose sight of yours. And are you willing to keep it hidden to protect an idol you will think will save you from the dangers for which it stands, but which does not exist? Mm -hmm. There are no adulterers in the kingdom, but there is a great appreciation for everything that God created because of the calm knowledge that each one is part of him God's son knows no idols, but they do know their father. Glory to God. Health in this world is the counterpart of value in heaven. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, no. Good. Okay. Yeah. It is not my merit that I contribute to you, but my love for you do not value yourself, not you all, but those who don't understand sickness. When you do not value yourself, you become sick. But Jesus' value of you can heal you because the value of God's son is one. When I said my peace, I give you, and I meant it, peace comes from God through my brother Yeshua Joseph Ben Joseph, that did you call Jesus Christ, to you. It is for you, although you may not ask for it. When a brother or sister is sick, it is because they're not asking for peace and therefore does not know they are having. The acceptance of peace is the denial of illusion and sickness is a what? 
an illusion. I think Anson said it earlier, sickness is a what? An illusion. That's why we were able to put it on the shelf. Mm. He's right. <laughs> yeah, <clears throat> every son of God has the power to deny illusions anywhere in the kingdom. So now the trick is, how do we get them to deny the illusion of their sickness? Especially when they pick it up every single day and it's become a what? Habit. Yes. And people are creatures of habit. habit. So what we try to do is plant a new habit of thinking. Mm. Yes, Lily. Um, I always I remind other people that it's their habitual thinking that get them into this situation right now. Mm. And you just have to cultivate another positive habit to get you out of this situation. Indeed. Ooh, 11-11. Ooh, upgrade updates and activations at this moment. Perfect. See, right on time. Could not plan that better. <laughs> That is absolutely true. We help them change their mind to a new thought. And at the same time, let me, let's, let's be clear. We are compassionate. It's not that we're ruthless and, oh, you suck that up type thing. We don't do that. And we know that. Because I, I don't want the people to see this and get that interpretation that that's how it's not that. It's, we are very compassionate to those that got put before us that are sick. Does that make sense? Yes. We just don't agree with it and we can't agree with it and we won't let them stay in that agreement around us. So if they don't like it, they have to go elsewhere and complain about it to someone else who will listen because they know they can't do it with who? Us. Because mm -hmm. we're going to lift them up to the highest vibration of their wholeness. Mm -hmm. Merely by denying them completely in themselves. I can heal you because I know you and you know them too. So when I say I, you know them too. Mm -hmm. This is why Lily knows how to touch certain places. This is why Sudi can say certain things. This is why ants can speak certain things and so forth and so on. Mm -hmm. I know your value for you. And it's this value that makes you what? Whole. Mm -hmm. Notice when we do whole, it's a heart. Yeah. <laughs> Well, think about it. Is it a circle? Is it a triangle? Is it what is it? Is it a square? What is it? Yeah, it's a heart. It's a heart. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, if it goes from a circle, all you're doing is denting one in and tipping it. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I love it. A whole mind is not adulterous and does not know of conflicting laws. Mm. I will heal you merely because I have one message. And it is true. Your faith in it will make you whole when you have faith in my brother, Yeshua Ben Joseph, Jesus the Christ. Because if you don't have it yourself, then you can use his name to help you. Does that make sense? Yes. I do not bring God's message with deception. And you will learn this as you learn this. And as you learn this, as you learn this, you will always receive as much as you accept. Hmm. Could accept peace now for everyone and offer them perfect freedom from all illusions because you heard his voice. Did I, I didn't highlight that for a reason, but did everybody catch that? You could accept peace now for who? For everybody. Everyone and offer perfect freedom. My brother could have did this from the cross. Mm. Did you know that? He could have he could have did this from the cross, and there would not be one sickness to this day. But because mm -hmm. of free will, he did not. Mm -hmm. But have no other gods before him, or you will not hear. Mm -hmm. God is not jealous to the gods you make, but you are. You would save them and serve them because you believe that they made you. You think they are your father because you are projecting onto them the fearful fact that you made them to replace God. We're talking about people who are sick, not you. This is how they think. Yet when they seem to speak to you, remember that nothing can replace God and whatever replacements you have attempt are nothing. 
Very simply, then you may believe you are afraid of nothingness, but you are really afraid of nothing. Mm. And in that awareness, you are healed. Huh. Pastor, are you saying I got to get out of fear? Yes. Mm. Really? But I ain't afraid of nothing. Why are you saying? Mm. Where are you being mean? Mm. <laughs> being out. But think about it. It's, it's fear always because it's driven by who? Ego. Mm -hmm. And the ego always separates from God and brothers and sisters. Always. This is why I can't co-create with other like-minded people. That's why it always falls apart and nothing is, is solid. Mm. Can't be. You will hear the good you listen to. You made the God of sickness and by making him, you made yourself able to hear him. Yet you do not create them because they are not the will of the father. This is why when people say, oh, it's God's will for me to be sick, we say, no, don't you put that on God. He made you whole. Mm -hmm. He is therefore not eternal and will be unmade for you in the instant you signify your willing to accept only the eternal. If God but has one son, there is but one God. Mm. Everybody catch that. Mm. You share reality with him because reality is not divided. To accept other gods before him is to replace other images before yourself. You do not realize how much you listen to your gods. Oh, pastor, I'm so sick. I wake up every morning and I'm sick as a dog. Man, I'm hard. Sometimes we just have to go, okay, we're going to let you, we're going to let you run out of breath. <laughs> Because eventually you'll get tired and then we're going to say, no, you're not. And then they're going to start again. And we're going to let them run out of breath. Because <laughs> they get tired before we do. Because it is them trying to project their belief of their position and their condition. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's easy for us to see them in their wholeness of God creation. Once we master that. Mm -hmm. Yet, oh, you do not realize how much you listen to your gods and how vigilant you are on their behalf. Yet they exist only because you honor them. Place honor where it is due and peace will be yours. Mm -hmm. It is your inheritance from your real father, not the ego. Mm -hmm. You can make your father, heaven, and the father, ego, you made did not make you honor is not due to illusions for honor them is to honor nothing yet fear is not to fear love because of his perfect harmlessness and because of this fear you have been willing to give up your own perfect helplessness and your own perfect help <clears throat> only at the altar of god will you find peace and this altar is in you because god put it there so people have to go within. If not, they go without. Yes. His voice still calls you to return, and he will be heard when you place no other before him. You can give up the God of sickness for your brothers and sisters. Ooh, here's the good part. In fact, you would have to do so if you give them up for yourself. This is why once we gave it up for ourselves, it is easy for us to heal others through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. For if you see the God of sickness anywhere, you have accepted them. And if you accept them, you will bow down and worship them because they were made as God's replacement. He is the belief that you can choose which God is real. Although it is clear this has nothing to do with reality, it is equally clear that it has everything to do with reality as you perceive it. Mm. And to that, Ooh. questions, comments, concerns? Too easy. Yes. It gets better tomorrow. So if everyone's able to get on tomorrow, with the title will be The End of Sickness. Ooh. Mm.
Uh, yes. Just one question, Pastor. What happened to to uh, somebody who who claims to already been six for like so many years and 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 uh, try to find so many ways to to for healing or, or cure and still does not happen? Then it will be even harder and harder to change their mind, right? Absolutely. And you have to remember this. <clears throat> Because of their free will, it, it would be impossible for them to be healed. Why do you think the master Jesus didn't heal everyone? Matter of fact, mm -hmm. in your New Testament Bible, in the book of Mark, we believe, Jesus went into a town and there was so much unbelief that the Bible says he could perform no great miracles, that he had to take one person out of the city. Think about this. Yes. Judy and Lily and Adrian have to take one person out of Vancouver into Prince George <laughs> for them to get healed and then bring them all the way back to Vancouver and tell them, tell no one. Mm. Possible. Why tell no one? Because they're going to get them back in unbelief. They're going to remind them of their condition. Yeah. They're going to tell them how it used to be. Mm -hmm. And instead of rejoicing in their wholeness and the healing that they received. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Yes. So the ones that you have that are like that, once you ask the Holy Spirit, what can you do to soothe their broken heart? And the answer comes and they don't receive it. He will give you the answer on there's nothing you can do. Bless them for the good, the holy, and the beautiful, and continue to just see them in their wholeness. Uh -huh. Every time they speak of their sickness, you speak of their wholeness. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm so sick. Oh, man, I'm glad to see you're healthy today. Glad God woke you up. <laughs> yeah. I wish I'd have died. Well, you didn't, but you're still here. <laughs> <laughs> we have a chance to get it right today <laughs> eventually they're going to get sick and tired of hearing so much positivity from you that they're either going to get on board or they're going to leave uh -huh. one of the two yes yes most of the time if they love you they'll get on board mm. we, we actually quite often hear people ask why are you always so positive? <laughs> and we will say, why are you so negative? Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> why are you so negative? Why would you not want to be positive? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here's the blessing. Thank God they see positivity in you. Positivity equals what? Wholeness. Uh -huh. They see a whole human being yeah. as a son of God. And they wonder why you're so positive. How are you so healthy and I'm so sick? <laughs> That's really what they're saying. Yeah. Not in terms that they might be physically, <coughs> but mentally, <laughs> mentally, they're sick. How are you so, why are you so, why are you always, they always ask me, why are you so, somebody even told me, I don't trust anybody who smiled too much and you smile, oh, you smile too much. <laughs> and we say, we smile because we love. Yes. And he couldn't say it. They couldn't. What, what could you say from that perspective? God loves you and I love you too. Oh, you being a smart aleck. No, I'm just telling you how I am. Mm -hmm. How can you not be this way? And then see how we're shifting your thinking? Mm -hmm. Even when we're thinking now. Yes, Anton. In terms of shifting mindset. Um, I have one of my friends, um, well, I shouldn't call him friends, he's my acquaintance, uh, but more of, he's always very negative with a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And um, and so I remember meeting up with him for coffee and and and, and he, he'd ask me, it's like, so what's going on in your life? Anything negative? And I was like looking at him, it's like, why, why, why would you ask negative stuff, right? <laughs> um, and so, and so, and so I actually fell into that trap. 
I told him what happened with with my rental issue or wherever it is mm -hmm. and then and and he went on going to say it's like well, you should have kicked her out or wherever it is. And then that way you won't have to issue wherever it is and find new renters that will actually pay. No, 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 no. And so, and so I actually had to stop him halfway and I told him, you do know, first of all, it's COVID. Secondly, if I were to put her out into the street, would I bear that consequence in the first place? Right. And thirdly, if I can push her up to where she needs to be, mm -hmm. she'll be a loyal renter to me. Yes. So what 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 what's better? Is it is it me finding someone short term or is it finding someone that can stay there for a long time, right? Absolutely. And so now I ask him. It's like, well, you've been a renter for pretty much your whole life. Have you ever like pissed your landlord off? And he was like, oh yeah, always. It was exactly my point. <laughs> exactly. Why not be All nice to him one yeah. day? Yeah. And see what happens. The only Absolutely. reason why you're moving to one place to another is because you pissed your landlord off. <laughs> Every single time. Over and over. And that's the law of attraction. Because he didn't fix it where he was at, he's going to get it at the next place and the next place and the next place and the next place and the next place till eventually he'll have to leave Prince George because he'll run out of places. Does that make sense? Yes. This, is the, this is the karma cycle and what we do is we bless them for the good the holy and beautiful and continue to see them in a place of wholeness and when they speak negative just be as positive you can and try to tell a better feeling story for them mm -hmm. that way they can start trying to tell a better story feeling for themselves because they start with selves and we can only do so much we can't do it for them does that make sense mm -hmm. and you have to remember this this is the most important you all attracted them. <laughs> so there's something within you that attracted them and vice versa. For you to plant a seed, to teach, or to learn. Sometimes it's both because as you are doing it, you're learning at the same time because each time is new. I guarantee you each time you've healed someone, it was always something new. It was never the same, ever. <laughs> Master Jesus, you would never see Master Jesus do anything the same. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, he healed one blind man with, with spitting on the ground, and people go, oh, that's he spit and made mud and put it on. That's unsanitary. But the man believed. The man didn't resist. The man wanted sight so bad and he was willing to do anything. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he showed the people, if you just have the faith of a mustard seed, you can be made whole. Make sense? Yes. yes. All right. Any other questions, comments, concerns? All right. Let's pray us out here. Most gracious, kind master, Father God in heaven, once again, we just thank you for a glorious, beautiful day that you blessed us to be in. To be in our right from a mind, body, and spirit mind, body, health, and whole. We thank you for using us for signs, wonders, miracles, our gift and our talents. We thank you for this fellowship meeting. For all who are in attendance, continue to bless over them with infinite divine wisdom as you guide them through their day of law of attraction as they attract unto them the good, the holy, and the beautiful. For this is the essence of their being. We thank you for all those who are sick and shut in, that you continue to heal them and bless over them, bless over those that you put before them to heal them. And we thank you for those who are going through trial and tribulation, that they will go through it no longer. Suffer those who are suffering no longer. And we thank you for hearing us and have always heard us. We love you because you first loved us in your name. We all pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. We love you all. We thank you all. We adore you all. Have a blessed day. And prayerfully, we will see you all tomorrow. If not, we will see you next week. Goodbye, y'all.